the crushed ice i think it's good <laughs> like i actually whenever i just think I, all right you got to drink the soda quicker when you've got the crushed ice but i feel that it like it's more soothing to drink from the ice because you you get like little bits of ice in your mouth and then you like crunch them and it's kind of like a like a slushy it also makes me think of when they put crushed ice in a urinal <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, they do that at bars and shit sometimes when they don't, when they don't have uh, like urinal cakes or they can't afford whatever. They just put ice in there. Well, I, the urinal cake is to get rid of the smell though, and the crushed ice is like. Oh no! It's at, it's for the. Uh, it's for um, <clears throat> it's like the crushed ice is to replace the, the little splash pad thing that makes the oh yeah the go splash everywhere. pad yeah that makes sense but i was like it's not to replace the urinal cake no it's it like has the, ice does not get rid of the smell of pee i i know this firsthand yeah and that's why it's disgusting when you go in uh pee in a urinal and it's yeah like a trough like, it's just like a bunch of ice and it's all yellow it's fucking disgusting yeah, and then there's, like, no walls between it either, so it's, like, even if you're not trying to look, you see peen in the corner of your eye. Yeah, that's when you ought to just go into a stall. Yeah, I, you know, so I've I've done it before. It's just not, it's just not a fun time. But, I mean, you could make a game of it, you know. It's, like, like you gotta, like, aim at, like, something that's in the toilet, you know, so you don't have to concentrate on all the other penises that are around you. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, I'm glad you don't really see the trough urinal anywhere these nah, days. Nah, people like their privacy these days. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Yeah. Don't, don't watch each other pee in public. Yeah, I, I, don't, I also don't like when, uh, people are, like, talking in the bathroom in general <laughs> oh yeah like when somebody's like trying to make it less awkward so they start like a conversation with you while you're both taking a piss <laughs> or like have, or from like stall to stall like somebody talks to the person in the stall next to them yeah to me that makes it more awkward yeah you know the ideal situation is you just pretend there's no one else there because if there even is anywhere like or if there is anyone else in a restroom with you like in their they're doing their number twos. Yeah. You're already like, uh, I think this could probably wait. Because <laughs> you don't want to have to like sit there and be smelling someone else's shit, you know? At That's least I true. Don't. I don't really want to. You just can't avoid it sometimes. Sometimes it's just got a lingering smell that just doesn't go away. I'm, gl I'm glad that we made a seamless <laughs> transition from talking about shit in our last podcast. <laughs> doing it again immediately at the beginning <laughs> yeah but there's this one guy that i worked with he he's like really loud and boisterous and pretty much talking all the time anyways and one time uh i was in the bathroom and you know unfortunately i had to to to, to make while i was at work and that's already not a great situation to be in <laughs> And then this guy comes in, and immediately I can hear him. He's like, hey, what the fuck? Who's putting all these fucking boogers on the wall? <laughs> and, then, and, 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 you know, and he's, like, talking. He's like, oh, fuck, somebody took my favorite stall. I can't fit my fat ass in any of these normal stalls. I got to use a handicap one. Fuck. Now I got to wait out here. And it's like, god damn it, whoever's oh in god. that one vacate immediately so he can get in and, in and out and he was just talking the whole time like oh man what the fuck what's going on today man what the fuck he's like hey who is that next to me wait i think i i think i know, I know shoes. those shoes yeah. like, and then like you can hear the other person like not like very uh like unwantingly just responding he's like oh it's it, it's it's me it's me it's it's, it's uh it's jerry He's like, wait, wait, which Jerry? <laughs> Talk about Jerry from Dispatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or just, Jerry from Receiving. <laughs> just like five minutes straight of that, and it's like, fuck, man, I got to get out of here. Yeah. 
that's that is the worst like if you don't want to make it weird and and toilet time you know just just keep to yourself get your business done yeah, you know relax enjoy it don't shit or piss all over the toilet seat or <laughs> you know yeah and if you do then clean it and don't leave it there <laughs> yeah but you know that's enough of that subject yeah. for this yeah. episode or for many more episodes yeah, to for, come but it'll come back eventually but oh of course you know we're we're people. we're man children yep that's <laughs> man child but you know there's there's just some things that uh you know permeate through culture that you know people people like to make a game out of it you know yeah like you know who can who can stand back the furthest and still pee into the urinal or yeah you know make, making a <clears throat> a decision of who gets to go into the haunted house first you know by you know drawing the shortest straw or <laughs> or maybe a a rousing game of rock paper scissors <laughs> <laughs> yeah that- and, and i you know we could play rock paper scissors right now to see who has to talk about what our first search is here should we is it rock paper scissors or is it rochambeau or is it paper scissor rock some people say it i guess I, that's the only ones that i've heard of yeah how should how should we do it here live <laughs> well I don't know what the difference is between any of them, really. I know some people, uh, you know, they do like one, two, three, shoot, or they'll do rock, paper, scissors, one, two, three. Yeah. Or they'll just do like, they'll do like count out one, two, three, and then do it on number four. Oh, well, yeah. I, I like doing it in number three. It's just like one, two, shoot. Oh, you don't so even like go to rock, three. paper, scissors. Yeah, and while you're saying scissors, you put it down. Mm, that's a little confusing, in my opinion. Really? Like rock, paper, scissors. No, that's rock, paper, scissors. Because you're saying uh, scissors when you're sh- shooting. Uh, so yeah. you're like subconsciously trying to like s- get somebody to do scissors. Oh well, like Rochambeau, like you do Rochambeau, and then you go. Oh really? Yeah, it's one. Well, two, yeah, three. but you don't say it. You say yeah, you say Rochambeau, so you don't like saying rock paper scissor and then having to shoot on scissor yeah. it does subconsciously make you want to choose scissor well it which means rock wins usually i didn't even round. know people say rochambeau really yeah well i mean we could find out yeah i'm i only heard about rochambeau recently maybe it's like a west coast thing but what is ro and it's c-h-a-m Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, it looks like it's a French uh, spelled word. Yeah, like a like a soup or something. Rochambeau. It's R O C H A M B E A U. For those of you who are confused, like us oh. unintellectuals, try to pronounce that guy's name. <laughs> oh, okay, um, and it is French, so yeah. So this is a French general, um, and it's a uh, Jean Baptiste Donat. Tian de Vimeur Conte de Rochambeau. <laughs> yeah, so that guy. Welcome to people <laughs> also search for. Where Ryan does a great job pronouncing anything that we that we search for. Yeah. While looking to answer the life's greatest questions. Yeah. Including which... what is Rochambeau? Yeah. So, uh, that guy, I'm just going to refer to him as Marshall. Um, Marshall? Mar- well, it says, Mar- well, he was a Marshall. Well, it says Marshall Jean Baptiste Dontian de Vimeur, Cante de Rochambeau. Yeah, why wouldn't you just call him Rochambeau? Okay, I'll just call him Rochambeau. <laughs> and he was okay. a French general. <laughs> yeah, so Rochambeau was a French nobleman and general who played a major role in helping the 13 colonies win independence during the American Revolution. So, I don't know. I wonder why this thing is named after that guy, though. Like, he's what came up on the Google results. Yeah, maybe if you, like, look at the Wikipedia of... Now, do we want to look at the Wikipedia, or do we want to look at the UrbanDictionary.com definition? I don't know. Urban Dictionary might not give us any factual answers. True, but I think that we should take a pit stop there after we go to the, the actual Wikipedia article. 
a pit stop, more like a shit stop. <laughs> yeah. Zing hey. of the day. Bringing it back. Ooh. Bringing it back to flavor country. Yep, and uh, I don't have any clicks today, but I can unscrew a cap. That's probably not as satisfying. Way to let everyone down, right? I'm sorry. So, you know, sometimes you go with the bubbly, sometimes you go with the Gatorade, and today is a Gatorade day. I'm bringing in the electrolytes for this rousing game of Rochambeau. It takes a lot of energy to Rochambeau, you know? I guess so. Well, I, this article is not really helping because it says that Rochambeau is a song by the network. It's another name for the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. And that's what we were talking about. But it's <laughs> also a game similar to sack tapping played by characters on the animated TV show South Park. <laughs> sack tapping. I don't know what that is. You watch South Park. Do you know what that is? Sack tapping? Well, that's typically when you just like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, like where you like yes? Yeah, that's what it says. Too. Okay, it's a slang term for a game where a participant attacks by slapping, tapping, punching, kicking, elbowing, twisting, or backhanding a victim's testicles. Yeah. Okay. The term derived from sack <laughs> slang that refers refers to the scrotum, and the activity is a form of groin attack. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they really broke it down for you. And then it says something the the sociological manifestation of and then I can't see what it says. Uh -oh. The <clears throat> sociological manifestation of bullying can result in severe testicular injury <laughs> that may require amputation <laughs> oh, as no. the only form of treatment. Oh no! A reported increase of uh, popularity of sack tapping, fueled in part by YouTube videos and probably Jackass, I assume the yeah, TV probably. show, and the subsequent increase in hospitalization has concerned <laughs> parents and urologists. <laughs> this next part. It is also called nut tag, bag tag, sack whack, bell flicking, and Rochambeau. Oh. Last name coming from an episode of South Park. Coming oh, in for okay. the win. Wow. Yeah, I definitely experienced that in uh, in school. I did too. And, I, yeah. I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan of the old sack tapping. To me, it could be funny. Uh I would say it was less funny for me as a, on the receiving end because let's just say some people might have a little larger of a target down there in the in the ball country, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, and that would make for me being you know you got a larger weak spot yeah yeah like in the Legend of Zelda you shoot at the eyes it's like sometimes the eyes a little bigger or smaller. Yeah, and so, I mean, but it was still fun to dish it out to other people. And the f <laughs> the funniest thing to me, though, was one time uh, there was uh, one one guy who, he, you know, he was kind of like, he wasn't into the horse play. He was pretty, like, straight-laced, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're like I don't a, wanna say, a tie to school. I don't, <laughs> yeah, if we, if, yeah, like, if we, uh, yeah, if it was more formal, he definitely would be wearing a tie. But, you know, he was just... You know, I I don't want to say panty waste, but yeah. <laughs> and uh, one time somebody did it to him and like he was never a part of it because he just, you know, maybe he thought that was too gay to be acceptable in the eyes of the Lord because we were like in a Christian school. Ooh. And uh, he got it the worst, though, because uh, he like essentially like went down to the ground. It was like writhing in pain and like went to the nurse's office and like left and like came back the next day and like said that he had to go to the ER and like whoa like he got like severely injured from it <laughs> and it was just like man like you really killed the buzz like Christy boy like with getting your nuts hit too hard like it you probably could have walked it off and instead Dude, that he... guy probably has huge nuts though that's why I don't know man but I would say he has like none because oh, okay. he went home and cried and was like, Mommy, Daddy, someone, somebody flicked me in my testicle yeah. sack. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, son. We need to go We're get that check to the ER immediately. And have like one of the most embarrassing, like, like traumatic oh. experiences of your life going in there. And like somebody's like fondling your balls. And you're like, ow, my, my testicle sack. 
I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be... I would hate that. It would have to suck, but if it was me, I'd be like, ah, it'll be fine. I'll just put some ice on. I'm like, yeah. I'm not telling my parents and <laughs> get going to the fucking hospital because my balls like ache. My peeny hurts. <laughs> my, my teeny peeny and my little peanuts hurt. <laughs> my twig and berries. My berries. Oh, oh my berries. My oh, berries pop. My berries. Oh. <laughs> They're about to burst. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I didn't know that that was what Rochambeau was. In, I in forgot. Addition to rock paper scissors. I forgot about that being in South Park. I think that's from like the early days. Probably. It it didn't say when it was from. It just says that came from South Park. But yeah. uh, you know what? There's also an album by Orange that's uh, Rochambeau, and uh, another one by The Grays. Wow, there's a lot of Rochambeau albums. Hey, hey, here we go. In the musical Hamilton, Rochambeau is referenced in the song Guns and Ships in Yorktown. Yeah, that's probably the general that we saw when we searched him originally. Yeah. Yeah, I I love that musical. Click on the people, Jean-Baptiste, uh, and... Yeah, that guy. And, yeah, well, let's see if it if we can find where the game came from on his Wikipedia page. Oh yeah, that would be a good. We should we should check. Well, it there's out. a legacy, Ooh. honors, memoirs, and legacy. Let's go legacy. Cause that, <laughs> if it's gonna be in anything, it's gonna be in legacy. You would assume, yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bullet points here. He's known for a few things. Yeah. Should we go down and see if if it's the game? Looks like there's a lot of like places named Rochambeau after him. Uh, streets. You know, but why the Rochambeau Avenue named in his honor in Bronx, New York? Well, we can find out after we see if we can find the game on his page. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing it on there though. I don't see it. The last one is what we just saw about the Hamilton thing. Yeah. Which the code word is Rochambeau. Dig me. Rochambeau. He 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 was part of the Revolutionary War, so it makes sense that he would be referenced in Hamilton. But I don't see anything about the game. But let's just see what what he was about real quick. Okay. In the military life. Let's read the first part. Oh, okay. And see what there is after that. All right. So Rochambeau was alive from. July 1st, 1725 to the 10th of May in 1807. He was a French nobleman and general who played a major role in helping the 13 colonies win independence during the American Revolution. America! During this time, he served as commander-in-chief of the French expeditionary force that embarked from France in order to help the American Continental Army fight against british forces well nice he helped us he helped us win the american revolution thanks rochambeau what a man you know it, 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 you would have to be a man he lived to fight be, in that war he lived to be 81 that's that's a pretty good life yeah well he had a military life and then the american revolution he returns to france See, he's got honors and memoirs and legacy. Like, what was he? What was his honor for? Maybe he like. Maybe maybe he was like a master of place and troops. So it was like, should we go with the rock, paper, or the scissors? But that would be like organizing the military. Maybe that's why. Maybe he was a good organizer of people, a leader. Hmm. Oh, let's see. President Theodore Roosevelt unveiled a statue of Rochambeau by Ferdinand Hamar as a gift from France to the United States on the 24th of May in 1902. It stands in Lafayette Square. Oh, Lafayette. That's a famous Frenchman. Washington, D.C. The ceremony was made in the occasion of the great demonstration of friendship between the two nations. France was represented by Ambassador... Jules Cambone, Admiral Fur what's that? Furrier 
and General Henry Bruguer. I don't think I said that right. Bruguer. Well, a lot of this stuff is going to be pronounced wrong. <laughs> yeah, as well as a detachment of sailors and marines from battleship Galios. Represent- that's probably not what that is. Representatives of Lafayette and Rochambeau families also attended. A Rochambeau tele- tete was held simultaneously in Paris. In 1934, a Kingsley Macamber donated a statue of Rochambeau to the city of Newport, Rhode Island. The sculpture is a replica of the statue in the French Navy, or in, in Paris. Well, they probably, I mean, <clears throat> the French probably sent a gift of statues of Rochambeau to, like, honor his service in the in a war that was for our independence. Yeah. And like, I think that's why a lot of the stuff that's named after him is on the, like in the new England States. Cause that's around like where he fought in the revolutionary war. That makes sense. But why? Is well, it, it says, oh, go, but yeah, there's a, there's a little part that says like military life. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> it said, after the death of his elder brother, he entered a cavalry regiment and served in Bohemia, Bavaria, and on the Rhine during during the War of Austrian Succession. By 1747, he had attained the rank of colonel. So he did a lot of shit before he ever even got to the United States Revolutionary War. He took part in the siege of Maastricht, 1748, and became the governor of Vendome in 1749. He distinguished himself as the Battle of Menorca, 1756, on the outbreak of the Seven Years' War and was promoted to Brigadier General of Infantry. And Then in 1758, he fought in Germ- Germany, uh, notably in the Battle of Crefield and the Battle of Klosterkamp, receiving several wounds at Klosterkamp. So <clears throat> this is all shit that he did, like, he was already like in a, in a uh, you know, like he was a decorated like colonel yeah. by the time he even helped the U.S. And yeah. it says in 1780. So this is jumping like 20 some years uh, after he like was wounded in uh, Germany. So, and then in 1780, he was appointed commander of land forces as part of the project codename Expedition Particulaire. He was given the rank of lieutenant general and command of se- some 7,000 French troops and sent to the con- join the Continental Army under George Washington. Oh. Yeah. So he worked for good yeah. old George Washington during yeah. the American Revolutionary War. First president of the United States. Axel... Von Fersen the Younger served as his aide-de-camp and interpreter. The small size of his force at his disposal made him initially reluctant to lead the expedition. Landed on Newport, Rhode Island on the 10th of July, but was held there inactive for a year due to his reluctance to abandon the French fleet blockaded by the British in Nangus. Nangansett. <laughs> oh, Narag, Nar- Narragansett. Okay, Narragansett <laughs> Bay. The college, Got there. the college, and the colony of Rhode Island and Providence plantations, known as Brown University, served as an encampment site for some of Rochambeau's troops. And the college edifice was converted into a military hospital, now known as University Hall. 1788, the force left Rhode Island and marched across Connecticut to join Washington on the Hudson River and Mount Kisco, New York. Odell Farm served as Rochambeau's headquarters from 6th of July to 18th of August, 1781. Oh, man. Yeah, they they marched their forces together, GW and Rochambeau, the siege of uh, Yorktown, and the Battle of Chesapeake, which were pretty uh, landmark battles from the Revolutionary War. September uh, 22nd, they combined with the Marquis de Lafayette's troops and forced Lord Cornwallis to surrender on 19th of October. The Congress of the Confederation presented Rochambeau with two cannons, taken from the British in recognition of his service. 
He returned to Vendome, and they were requisitioned in 1792. 1792. You can learn all this and more in the rap genre in the musical Hamilton. <laughs> no, because no one's going to do that, because uh, that, that sounds like an awful, awful miserable time it's not i swear <laughs> it's so good <laughs> hamilton Ham- i suggest everyone go watch hamilton or find a or listen to the hamilton soundtrack on spotify alongside the people also search for a podcast on spotify <laughs> or just listen to people also search for because it'll be much more entertaining than the stupid uh, fucking annoying musical dude you can't Say that we're more entertaining than Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I? You can, but <laughs> I will disagree for the time being. Maybe we'll get to that level when we do the musical episode. <laughs> An episode of us just the entire time is singing, but it's also about musicals. Mm. <laughs> that would be after we get 40 million subscribers. I I don't know about that, Ryan. I mean,. Maybe if we got, you know, a huge sponsorship deal to do that, I'd sell out and, you know, throw all my values in the garbage can. And consider but that's the only time, is once your values are gone. Yeah. But for now, you know, we're going to, I'm going to stay with my values and, you know, something that, something that is more interesting to me is... How is rock, paper, scissors connected to Rochambeau? Like, is is Rochambeau even, like, in reference to that guy? Because I haven't seen anything like that. Oh, it's the first thing that comes up. Why is rock, paper, scissors called Rochambeau? Other people have asked this question, and now we can mm-hmm. tell everyone. Why do people call rock, paper, scissors Rochambeau? Shall go to this website, mentalfloss.com. Mmm, good old mental floss. Yeah. They'll give us the answers. All right, so this is a little description of it. In some circles, the decisive game of rock, paper, scissors goes by another name, Rochambeau. In the U.S., the term is more commonly used on the West Coast, especially in Northern California. This week, the Slate podcast, well, we're another podcast. Mm. They're getting in on our action live. Lexicon Valley invited Wall Street Journal language columnist Ben Zimmer to dive into the origins of the moniker Rochambeau. Mm, Here we go. According to certain legends, the term dates back to Comte de Rochambeau, a French nobleman who fought against the British during the Revolutionary War. Yep, we just learned about him. We did, and gets a shout out in his hit musical... Uh, won't be mentioned again on this podcast. Uh, His name, oh, no, 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 cutting that out, Ryan. His name served. A, actually, I'm going to cut out every time we say Hamilton. No, yeah, yeah no. His name served as a code word <laughs> at, at the Battle of Yorktown, where he commanded the French troops. However, there's no historical evidence of it going back to Revolutionary times, says Zimmer. Earliest known use of Rochambeau as a uh, synonym for the game Rock, Paper, Scissors is found in a 1936 book called The Handbook for Recreational Leaders, published in Oakland, California. That mention spelled it R-O-S-H-A-M-B-E-A-U. So, not like his name, uh, Jean-Baptiste Rochambeau, that is. So... It really, you know, like I was starting to suspect that there's not even any reference to that general Rochambeau. It's just like a weird, like... Either that or the guy knew the, he knew the general's name, but he didn't know how to spell it correctly. But it does, it's not in relation to anything the general did, though. Yeah. I mean... It even says, right on the next line, it says that uh, Comte de Rochambeau had no involvement with the game of rock, paper, scissors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought, like, maybe it was something... You know how, like, people are trying to make a decision and they roll the dice, like, to see? I thought maybe, like, General Rochambeau was just that kind of guy. He's like, oh, should we go into war? And he's like, Rochambeau. It's like, if I get rock, I, we go into war. If we get scissors, we we stay here. And then if we get... <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm um, paper. We retreat. I then... kind of got the feeling that he wouldn't have been the type of leader to settle something with a decisive game like that. He yeah. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. I was just thinking maybe he was famous because he did do that, but he was just so lucky that every time he did it, it worked. <laughs> and so like his... that's his legacy. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that it doesn't have anything to do with him. Uh, but Just it's good old California culture. I guess so. It says the San Francisco area had long been home to a large population of East Asian immigrants. It's likely the kids would have been playing the early version of rock, paper, scissors. Became with the familiar with the Japanese name John Ken Pong. Oh, of course. I forgot that in Japan it's John Ken Pong. Way to go, Ryan. There's little historical evidence to trace My the change. How is there failing? Zimmer hypothesized the Bay Area kids in the 30s ended up Americanizing the name, perhaps with the help of the Revolutionary War knowledge they picked up in history class, transforming it into a similar word, cadence. So that's even just the speculation of how it ended up going from Jean Ken Pone to Rochambeau and, you know, maybe... Maybe it had nothing to do with the guy, Rochambeau. So I guess we'll actually never know, Ryan. Probably not. But. <laughs> but what? <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but we can know other things <laughs> about Rochambeau. We can. But. Because uh, we. We even uh, typed in like, why is why do people call rock paper scissors Rochambeau? But that didn't really tell us why. No, so you want to think it. I mean, they place? said it was in a book that you know the book from the thirties that they nineteen thirty six. But the, did it? I don't know if you said like that. It was. Well, it says the earliest known use was a synonym for the game rock paper scissors, but I don't know. So maybe. It's because uh, of that book. Maybe that's just what they called it. The Handbook for Recreational Leaders. Maybe. Yeah, and it was from California, so maybe they... And like a, you know, like I was saying before, I had a feeling that they said Rochambeau on the West Coast, and out here they say rock, paper, scissors. I just thought since it came from recreational leaders that I wanted to know what some recreational leaders were. What came from recreational leaders? The term Rochambeau it came from the book for recreational leaders. Hmm. But I was like, what defines a recreational leader? Like, what is that? Okay. A recreational leader is a facilitator who enables and encourages recreational activities. Eh, that makes sense. This is an important job and one that requires a high degree of skill that comes through not only study, but also experience. I feel like this definition of recreational leader is talking about like a physical education teacher. Or yeah, like somebody pretty much. Who, yeah, or like somebody who runs like a rec center. Yeah, just somebody who in general like promotes like games and socializing. Yeah, like a, like a middle-aged basketball Well, coach and then a few links like down. camp counselor. Yeah, a few links down the... The one of them is uh, stopbullying.gov, and it says recreational leaders, and it, they help with bullying prevention. Like, hey, you guys, hey, are you are you fighting over there, you guys? Cut cut that out. Why don't, why don't you just settle this with a nice old game of Rochambeau? Yeah, <laughs> that's probably yeah. And then they do it. I I don't know. The kids are they're probably like clawing at each other at that point, but you got to pull them apart and then. They play the game, and if they, you know, if they stop, you know, the teachers have done their job. Uh, I hope so, but probably not. I don't think they're gonna stop. They're just gonna keep fighting. They might even fight more just to spite the teacher. Probably Maybe even that person that was getting picked on is like, you know what? Fuck it this. It depends if they. Like I want to be bullied. Or not. <laughs> it's like if it's a teacher that you already hate, it's like you're gonna do even worse things to make them mad. But then. If it's like just to teach you, like you like feel a little bit bad, and you're like, okay, I guess I'll stop. Like, I don't want to. I, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of teachers out there that kids like. Mm, I think that's the whole yeah, part that's... of school is that they hate being there and they hate their teachers. Yeah, it's well, a at fucking, least in high school, yeah, it's a fucking kid prison. Yeah, I think I think that's like 
that is exactly how it is. That's not how it is in like elementary and then middle. It's kind of like sort of like that. But then in high school, that's exactly how it is. Yeah, it's a good like the whole uh, like grade school kind of system that we have in America. It's like a good metaphor for how life is like you start out being like innocent and and like carefree and positive and then as the years go on you just start seeing the truth more and more and then by the time you're in high school you're just like you hate everyone you're like fuck this and like everything is you're oppressive. like santa claus isn't really <laughs> pissed oh <laughs> when you're 18 yeah when you're 18 it's like you finally had your 18th birthday <laughs> you're just like what <laughs> santa claus isn't real <laughs> who's been giving me present mom <laughs> Yeah, that's your 18th birthday present. Yeah, it's it's just a it's just a hand it's just a card and you open it and it says Santa's not real, <laughs> <laughs> and then it has like a it has like a gift card to the liquor store. <laughs> but you're a like, gift card to the liquor store. Yeah, <laughs> for your 18th birthday, you yeah. really can't drink until you're 21. Yep, and then you have to drink now because well, no, it, and it has a fake ID. Yeah, mm. it's like your parents give you a fake ID and a gift card to the liquor store and just a card that says Santa's not real. That's uh, they're that's setting a, you up for <laughs> they're setting you up for victory. That's in life. some good parenting, right? Yeah, yeah, that's not something that normally happens. I'm sure your kids will, you know, grow up to be really fine, upstanding citizens. Probably. <laughs> you treat them uh, with it, such lies and... <laughs> yeah, well, ev- everybody treats their kids with lies. Everybody lies about Santa Claus for at least, like, eight years, maybe, like, ten years. I don't really know. I haven't had any children. But you gotta lie to your kids about Santa Claus and, like, the Tooth Fairy. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to, but like sure then all the other kids, you know, that are like they would argue about whether it's real or not, and it would cause like yeah, and then you would outrage, st- and then the you know you as the person that never heard about Santa Claus or learned that from your parents, you're just like, oh yeah, I can settle this. He's not real. I know that because my parents told me. <laughs> <laughs> and they're smarter than you, you dumb fuck. Yeah, but they're not going to know that they're smart, smarter than them. They're going to be like, but my parents said they, he was real, and my parents know <laughs> better than your parents. Your, you par- know? your parents are fucking lying to you, you sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like It's just like a, a really rude kid because their parents never gave them the magic of being a child. <laughs> yeah. See, that's being a good parent. Never giving them the magic of being a child as a good parent. Yeah, like teaching them early, like, just so you know, you know, it, you know, life's going to get hard and it's going to be really, really bad. And, you know, enjoy <laughs> enjoy your life now because it's just going to get hard. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. But the second you turn 18, I'm going to tell you that Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're on your own from then. And I'll give you the tools that you need to survive in this world. Gift card to the liquor store. Yeah, gift card. To, that's so yeah. funny. Gift card to the liquor store. I don't think that exists, but it probably does. I don't know. I'm gonna look it up. No, it it there has to be liquor store. Can you get liquor store gift cards for your holiday needs? Well, you can get okay. You can get like a gift card to a grocery store, and then you could use that to buy liquor. So I guess a grocery store gift card could be a liquor gift card. And then I know that they have like gift card for like wineries and stuff. I guess so. But there's no like I don't think there's any gift cards for like specific liquor stores. I don't even know any specific like ch- is there even a chain liquor store? Uh kind of, but you know, that's beside the point. Is there anything else we should try to learn about Roshimbo? About rock paper scissors? Well, we definitely have to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, we will. Wins. We'll give the people what they want, but you know, I know we have to. Let's make sure that we we get you know. all the information on it first. Now, what I guess we could look up like common times rock, paper, scissors happens. Like, what are the arguments that people use that for most times? 
If you think that's going to be a fruitful result, then go ahead and try. I'm not sure. Um, when is rock, paper, scissors used? <coughs> Most often. You, you put scissored. Rock paper scissors. <laughs> Rock paper scissors. Oh, that's got to be something. I'm not. I'm not going to type that one in, but that's got to be something. Probably. The surprising psychology of rock paper scissors. Now, I mean, we haven't looked up the psychology, like how it actually works in your brain. That's... I think we all know how it how it works, Ryan. Are you saying it's random chance? I hate when people say that they're good at rock paper scissors. It's like Are fuck you. you. It's all a mind. It's game, not Jacob. a motherfucking it's a mind, mind game. game Jacob. That's so. Rude. It's like you can tell from the way that their eyebrow is no. twitching. I heard if somebody choose rock. I recently heard somebody at work like, oh, I'm, I, I can usually like read people's tells. You know, I know, I know what they're gonna throw next. It's like, shut your fucking stupid mouth. Yes, I win like 33% of the time. <laughs> yeah. My dad told me that that was a really good ratio. It's not poker, you you fucking piss ant. Like, you know, it's not tw- you're, like blackjack. You're not counting cards Don't here. self-aggrandize because you, you think you can read people and it's a psycho- psychological mind game. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's a game of chance and that's why people use it because it's relatively it's, it's fair. fair. Yeah. Now, yeah. some people like try and cheat by like throwing out their... their choice a little bit after yours so they can kind of see. Now, that... That, th- that would be like saying that... You can beat somebody in a coin toss. Yeah, like most of the time. That's just, that's so fucking dumb. Like, because rock paper scissors, like only you know, a little bit more. You know, has a high a little bit. Yeah, it's thirty three percent instead of fifty percent. Yeah. So I don't know. I just hate when people think that they can like best you well a coin like, there's flip, some fucking strategy to it a coin flip works best with two people like two decisions but rock paper scissors you can do with like more people easily you know well yeah you can like eliminate people yeah it's just i think it's a it's it's probably a little bit better when you have a large group than a coin flip like if you're trying to decide something but if it's just two of you i think a coin flip's probably better but you don't need a coin to do rochambeau exactly which we which that is definitely and it's more fun anywhere yeah it is more fun it feels like a contest even though it's a contest of luck but should we see it or we could we could carry on i don't yeah i don't want to know any fucking contrived let's just see what the history of it is the history of rock paper scissor yeah oh god how to always win at rock paper scissors no uh yeah (laughs) okay that none of nothing came up as to you know what you thought you were gonna search for no so rock paper and scissor history yeah because it sounds like it it came from the um that asian game was it what's it called uh uh jong kempon jong kempon yeah yeah oh uh, (laughs) <laughs> like kanji fireworks and general so's chicken <laughs> Wait, rock what? paper scissors <laughs> was actually created in china the- general so's chicken was created in china i thought that was like american chinese food that they don't actually have in china or like japan i i i don't i had no idea what it was from i i i heard a lot of people say that it was like just an americanized chinese dish but Mm. Uh, it says that the game was created around the time of Christ, but stayed in China for hundreds of years. It wasn't even until the 1700s that it's made its way over to Japan. The, the rest, as they say, is history. Wow. So it, was, it didn't even start in Japan. It started with Jesus. The article that, we, that I just read that from, it says it's called uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Japan's Most Dangerous Game. <laughs> tofu it's so dangerous it's those on, scissors are so sharp yeah to, tofugu.com i wonder why it's the most dangerous game like what makes it dangerous i don't know ryan it's i like that john ken pone is always shortened to john ken like you can just say like let's play john ken or you just say john ken and then you go and you're like john ken pone 
Nice. John Ken in the ensuing years became incredibly popular in Japan and today. Pretty much everybody in Japan knows how to play. You could walk up to any child in Japan, and he or she would begin immediately ready to throw down in a game of Jankin. Jankin is pretty similar in the way most people play rock, paper, scissors in the U.S. You use one of three moves to beat your opponent. Rock, break, uh, rock breaks scissors, scissors cut paper, and paper covers rock. So, nice. It It literally is the same thing. It's exactly the same. The whole... Uh, the differences don't stop there, it says. There's a whole special ritual to Jean Ken that's a little different than what I'm used to in the U.S. Ooh, Both players baby. start by saying Saisho Wagyu, <laughs> or starting with rock and holding out a closed fist. Each says Jean Ken Pwn and throw out their move, whether it's rock, paper, or scissors. If there's a tie, both players choose the same move, but both players say Aiko, Aiko Desho. Or it seems like a tie, and keep going in rapid fire succession until somebody finally wins. But it doesn't stop there. There are tons of variants to Jankin, and some more violent than others. No. Whoa! What could that possibly mean? <laughs> you know that this could be like a chance for a little bit of uh, Ryan's weeb corner. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Just really quick. This is a quick. Ryan's Weep Corner. But in uh in the anime Hunter Ryan's Hunter, Weep Corner <laughs> Where we talk about anime and no talk of stuff. <laughs> we This is Ryan's Weep Corner. <laughs> You're right. This is just, I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, but in the in the Shonen anime, uh Hunter Hunter, like Hunter X Hunter. Oh, I've actually seen that one. Yeah. The the main character has like a special move that's a basically him shooting out rock and john ken pone and he says it like you know how like goku when he does a kamehameha <laughs> he's like kamehameha. it's exactly like that except he's like john ken pone like oh that's that's kind of funny that the like shown and anime like they like all the all the people have like a saying like like in one piece <laughs> like luffy says like goma goma no yeah Whatever the fuck <laughs> yeah, he, he says <clears throat> So they all do that. They like charge up their attacks and say their like special phrase. Yeah, that's a sh- that's a shown in anime thing. See, I told you this was our weeb corner. Jacob. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> like I don't know anything about weeb things, and then you're like, yeah, but in One Piece, it's exactly the same as that. I know a couple mainstream anime is Ryan. I have already established that. You don't have to try to rope me in the you, weeb You can't land. be like over five or six hundred episodes into One Piece and be like, I don't, I don't know anything about it. Weeb things. I'm, I'm just saying I don't know much about it, and I'm True. definitely not a weeb because I don't have, you know, forty you anime weebo fig- tendencies. <laughs> weebo tendencies. I don't have uh, wall scrolls in my room, and I don't have forty anime figurines or like body pillows. Yeah, I don't have any of that stuff. Yeah, but uh, what you do have is an appreciation for the genre, and that's all that matters. Yeah, but yeah, that's the that's the one weeb thing I know about John Gampone. That's a good show, everybody. You should go watch it. It's pretty good. Hunter x Hunter. <clears throat> what? Does, do people really say Hunter x Hunter? No, it's Hunter Hunter. But if but you yeah. don't if you don't know how it's spelled, it's harder to search for. They just put an X in there for some reason. I don't know why. Everything in that show has an X in between it. Mm, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Weird. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> uh, the most expensive game of rock paper scissors. Here, this might help satisfy what you were trying to search for earlier because you wanted to see what is it usually used for. Oh, yeah. is isn't just used by the Japanese to see who pays for the beer or whose turn it is to clean the dishes. can also be used for expensive, high-stakes decisions. Ooh. In 2005, a Japanese businessman decided to auction off his art collection, with, which included masterpieces from a renowned European artist like Cezanne, Picasso, and Van Gogh. Oh, wow. <laughs> but he ran into a, big, a bit of a snag when it came to decide which of the world's two famous auction houses christie's or sotheby's would get the rights to auction off his magnificent collection so how did the businessman make his decision he made two auction houses compete in a game of jankin oh wow (laughs) so okay so you can use this for any disagreement or to see well, who does anything. Like we said, it's like relatively fair. Well, so. and this that right there is exactly why I thought maybe like the Jean Campone, like the 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 
in the revolution i thought maybe like that's how he made his decisions and that's what he was famous for and that's why they call it rochambeau in america but i guess not i guess it, it's it's but people have done it for that, but he didn't do that. I wanted it to be that. <laughs> I wanted him to be like the Japanese and use it for his high stakes military decisions. Too bad. I mean, but it did say in the one uh, part of the article that it has been around for like thousands of years. True. So it's probably going to be hard to tell when the first. Well, you got to think like rocks, paper, and scissors would have had to have been in a product that was invented. So yeah. it has to be after scissors were invented, because <laughs> pa- in paper. But I was I would assume that paper came before scissors. You know, oh, of course, like the egg yeah. Before the chicken. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you gotta have something to cut before you make something the thing to cut it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It said that it was popularized in like the 1700s. Okay, so we need to look up when scissors were invented, because then we're gonna know exactly <laughs> exactly when somebody probably had the idea. When were scissors invented? I mean, scissors are a big part of John Campone. I would say know. early. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, see, it is pretty early. 1500 BC. It is most likely that scissors were invented <laughs> around 1500 BC in ancient Egypt. The earliest known scissors appeared in Mesopotamia 3,000 to 4,000 years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so apparently... Uh... Uh, Jean Con- fuck, I keep forgetting Jean Ken Pone. That it's been around for, like they said, and you know, back until biblical times. So it could, it's four, it's like four thousand years old. Boom! Learning about the scissors and rock paper scissors on people also search for. Wow, I I would never imagine scissors were that old. I mean, it's a pretty like simple, sim- uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a very simple tool. <laughs> It's pretty, uh, you know, easy. It's just two shears attached to each other with a pin in the middle of it. Yeah, it's it's just like a fulcrum, you know. Yeah. So there we go. Since we, you know, learned so much today, uh, we should look up when rocks were invented too. No, no. I was actually gonna <laughs> suggest. I mean, maybe <laughs> when were rocks invented? Yeah, people. maybe you might need to learn about that, but. <laughs> I think the listeners might Geology. rather hear a good old rousing uh, installment of Jacob and Ryan Search of the Week. All right. <laughs> if you are so inclined. Sure. Sure, we can. And we can uh, just, you know, we can just do a quick uh, quick one here. We don't have to get too in-depth today. We don't have to go off into the weeds too much. So... Here we go. Uh, Ryan, do you have a a good search of the week for us? I think I do. And, you know, sometimes you get a little bit hungry and you need to, you know, you're just curious about food in general and you want to look up what's in certain things. And there's a lot of different kinds of chicken out there and a lot of different kinds of hot sauce on those chickens. <laughs> and like wings? <clears throat> wings, yeah. But... But I was, like, specifically wondering, like, what is in Nashville hot chicken that makes it, like, Nashville hot chicken as opposed to just, like, buffalo chicken? Oh, okay. I think I have somewhat (laughs) Do you really spell it with a G? Ganache? Yeah. Yeah, I I think I know the difference, but uh, let's... Okay, I'll predict the difference. I think it's uh, buffalo sauce is mostly vinegar based and nashville hot is like more of a molasses or barbecue sauce type of base or really like honey. i don't think so because i feel like i don't i don't think it doesn't taste barbecue to me well that's well no maybe not barbecue but like honey because they they use either molasses or honey oh okay so you think it's a little sweeter maybe i could see it being molasses i suppose but okay People also ask what makes Nashville hot chicken. So, okay, nearly all hot chicken is marinated in buttermilk to impart flavor and to retain the meat juices upon frying. But a typical Nashville style hot chicken spice paste has two key ingredients: lard and cayenne pepper. All right. Ah, 
The two are mixed together, three parts pepper to one part lard, and heated until they form a thick sauce. So when you hear Nashville hot chicken, you're like, oh yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be extra bad for me and blow out my bee hole. Oh man. <laughs> Just to bring it, it does... all the way back around. To... Yeah. <laughs> the... And then you have to have a terrible conversation with the person in the stall next to you. Yeah, yeah I ate some because... Nashville hot chicken and uh, right. <laughs> I'm burning up over here. And metaphorically I'm, and literally i'm gonna need some tp because i ran out <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> and like that's the worst time you have to ask it's like my ass is burning could somebody please help me out here and then all you hear is people at the urinal and, and everybody's like looking around at each other like are you gonna respond to him like uh-huh. are you gonna respond to him and then one one hero <laughs> <laughs> goes and gets a p a, a you know uh a TP from like one of the adjacent stalls and he hands it under the door and he's like, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. If I did that, I feel like I wouldn't be a under the stall type of guy. I would be a like toss it over the top. Oh yeah. Cause that way my hand well, doesn't have to be anywhere. <laughs> their naked ass. That's <laughs> shitting. The problem with tossing it over the top though, is like you may not get it directly where the person is or they may not be expecting it to catch it. So like, it could just like fall into the ground that's covered in piss and then the whole roll is ruined. Uh, yeah, but it's their responsibility if they need it enough. They're to gonna take fucking... it off the piss covered floor like No, 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 to catch and, it like... in the first place. If you need it that bad and I toss it gently over the wall and you don't catch it, that's your fucking Some up. people aren't that great at sports. Ryan, you we're talking about like... life or death here, I know. No, we're, this is like a three foot wide space. Like, there's not, it can barely even fall beside you it's anyways. It's like the person has already, like, hit it in the basket, like in basketball. You just have to, like, get it out of the hoop. It's like you're standing under a basketball hoop and it just comes right in. Essentially. So, if you drop it and piss, then fuck you. Then unroll it until there's no piss on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, if it was just like there was a particularly large amount of. Of a piss on the floor, like, it, just, it like destroyed like half whatever of the, half of the roll. This is uh, an absurd like that. It's not even an argument. I'm actually kind of I upset don't... that this came up during Nashville hot chicken because I like Nashville hot chicken. I, I don't want to diss it. Like it's good. We're not dissing it. We it, we just we're just saying it burns your bee hole. Yeah, a little bit, and like not me. Oh yeah, not me either. <laughs> so it's a it's a myth. Yeah, because enjoy I'm, your chicken. I'm not a wimp who can't handle spicy food, but yeah, that can't handle a spicy meal. <laughs> Anyways, though, so what makes the buffalo? I'm pretty sure it's just like it's a vinegar base with like pepper. Like it's what like makes a, pepper a sauce. like regular buffalo sauce? Well, yeah, instead that, of the Nashville with the lard and the yeah, that isn't that what your question was? About? No, no, I just wanted to know what was in the Nashville style <clears throat> oh, chicken, okay. which is it, what makes it Nashville style is it's lard and cayenne pepper. Oh, okay. Well, just for the hell of it, we can see what how you make uh, buffalo sauce. Okay, uh, how to make buffalo sauce. And by the way, I actually hate buffalo sauce, and I'll never eat it in my life. I'm a big fan of buffalo sauce, so at least we've got differing opinions here. So people also ask, what is buffalo sauce made of? All right. The base of buffalo sauce is a mixture of hot sauce, vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, butter, and seasonings. Mm. Frank's Red Hot Sauce is typically used because it's a secret ingredient in the original recipe. Oh, so Frank's yeah. Red Hot has been doing the buffalo sauce thing forever, like even in the original buffalo sauce. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's pretty much what I thought. It's like a vinegar base. I didn't know there was Worcestershire sauce in it. Me either. I, Frank's Red Hot is just uh, like cayenne pepper based sauce too. So, yeah, I think it's just cayenne pepper sauce. Which... I, I I just find the like acrid smell of buffalo sauce and how it like burns your fucking nostrils just awful yeah and you well you like nashville hot chicken though right yeah yeah they're they're definitely a different taste for sure i actually think well it's because of the vinegar that's that's why i don't like tabasco sauce anymore because eventually i was like i need it to be more hot than vinegary so then i end up just getting like habanero hot sauce and if you're a noob to uh, spicy foods, that one will definitely scorch your b-hole. 
Yeah. And <laughs> so then like you got to work, you got to start at Tabasco and then work up from there. Yeah, you don't want to go up to California Reaper. Carolina. Carolina. Reaper. Oh, I got California on my head because of the Rochambeau thing. I guess so. And you know what I have on my mind, Ryan? What? A it, search of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and mine is from the opposite side of the country, I think, based on the name. All Have right. you ever heard of a transatlantic accent? Transatlantic accent? Yeah. No. Is that just like the way people talk? I think it's the way that people talked like in the 20s when they're like, hey, why don't you come over here, you, uh, you nice long, young lady? Then? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, just... show me your gams. <laughs> show me your gams. <laughs> show me your gams. I don't know why, but that sounds like it would be like... If there was a like Mortal Kombat fighter that was like a you know like a flapper and they were just like <laughs> show me a gams show me a gam like as they're like <laughs> attack like catchphrase <laughs> oh that would be so annoying oh you know why I thought that it's because uh in Smash Brothers Captain yeah, Falcon goes show, show me, me your moves. moves yeah that's that's what I was saying <laughs> show me your gams like I was just like ima- show me your gams just, yeah, <laughs> somebody or imagine like a guy with like high waisted pants and a twirly mustache just like shooting out a little like Hadouken but he's just like show me a gams show me a gams <laughs> pow right in the kisser pow right in the kisser <laughs> <laughs> and then one of his powers he turns directly into a uh, family guy <laughs> okay um the mid-Atlantic accent or transatlantic accent is a cultivated accent of English blending together prestigious American and British English ways of speaking adopted in the early 20th century. So this is like the turn of the century, you know, well, then and then, uh, well, early 1900s. So mostly by American aristocrats and actors, it is not a native or vernacular or regional American accent. Okay, so... People basically just started talking like that, like <laughs> aristocrats and actors. And it was like a thing that kind of like was like, hey, we're more important than everyone else. Oh, so man. let's start talking like we're more important. I just like how there's a YouTube video that says, why don't people in old movies talk weird? <laughs> yeah. Well, click on that. Show me your gams. <laughs> Show me your gams. <laughs> oh, it's why a YouTube. All the... It's a YouTube video. So we'll... uh you know, we'll be right back. All right. So, I mean, <clears throat> That's... I guess it, yeah, it's just like an, an amalgam between like quasi British accent mixed with, mixed with like East Coast, like aristocrat accent that they adopted like for the movies to make it seem like they were really important. Well, well listen what... here, you, you dirty copper. Well, I'm not going to take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what's really interesting about it, though, is nobody ever actually talked like yeah. that except <laughs> when they were like trying to or taught to do that it's it's not something that just happened like a new york accent yeah it's so fucking weird it's a made-up accent yeah (laughs) i mean i kind of like it makes it funny and it's also like i love that that's the reason when you hear people in old movies talking like that it's because that that's just like how like actors and stuff talk i wonder if that i wonder if that like translated into how like news like news reporters it had to have like that's like the modern day evolution of it's just we think it's like we think that the people that get in those jobs think that that's how you're supposed to talk when you're doing that job so they just talk that way and that's not how they actually talk yeah i mean it's clear that news casters don't actually speak every day although do you think maybe it like slips into their regular life where they're like it probably does where where they're like you can't think that the report of the week doesn't do that kind of <laughs> stuff like in his actual <laughs> life oh my god he like he gets up in the morning he's like <laughs> he's like hello ladies and gentlemen i am about to get dressed for the day ahead of me he he actually <laughs> kind of has that transatlantic I feel like speech he, could do, he does <laughs> He has to act like that on a normal basis. Uh, yeah. Bas- basis, yeah. He's like, all right, just took a really nice uh, warm shower. I'm uh, going to go ahead and pop on some deodorant right there. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, the Report of the Week is a, a YouTuber who reviews like fast food and has a podcast that's like an old-timey radio show. <laughs> But he wears these suits, and it's so cute and ridiculous. Oh, it's so cute. He's got the most attractive fingers I've ever seen in my oh life. Oh, God. 
Yeah, he's pretty he's a pretty enjoyable YouTube guy. If you want to if you want to find out which uh, f uh fast food uh, garbage you should try out uh to to get nice and fat from uh, <laughs> go go watch him or even you know watch he it. He probably has a review on Nashville for hot chicken. Oh, honestly. I'm sure he does. Or even if you want to like be uh kind of grossed out by fast food maybe watch it as well because yeah and check out his hands and imagine them playing a rousing <laughs> game of rochambeau while you're at it. <laughs> or imagine or look at his hands and imagine him like feeding you like a, a cheesy gordita crunch <laughs> oh. <laughs> like but in 3d so like you hyper see you see everything like coming towards your face <laughs> as a hologram it like gets bigger and bigger uh, yeah, that's but... how I like to enjoy a nice gordita crunch. <laughs> Who doesn't? But uh, and then I talk like this, and I'm like, "That's a delicious crunch." <laughs> <laughs> it's cheesy and crunchy. Mmm. I can't wait to get another cheesy gordita crunch. <laughs> I do Taco like that. Taco Bell. I, I am definitely disappointed that that's not just how people used to talk. <laughs> really, I'm kind of glad. I I'm very upset by it. It's almost like. They're acting that way, and it's not real, and it, it makes me... I guess most of the things in Hollywood aren't real, though. I know what is real, Ryan. <clears throat> what is? The the people also search for podcasts. Uh, yeah. You know, it's... The podcast where we face each other in Jean Campone. Oh, yeah. I, we almost forgot to play a we game. Can't, we can't not play the game. We got to see who wins because we're we're getting to the the end here. There has to be something at stake, though. There has to be. How about like <laughs> whoever uh, loses has to record the whole next episode in the transatlantic oh. accent? Oh, 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 oh man, <laughs> you really want to do that? Or at least like a whole part of it, because I feel like. I or how know. about everything we have to read? We'll do it in. Oh, episode. okay. <laughs> the next episode, everything that that person has to read, they have to do it in a transatlantic accent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We guys have to write that down. Yes, I agree. Everything we have to read. <laughs> every single thing that's read, <laughs> not not like the bits or the things we talk about outside of reading, but whenever we stop to read something, yeah, we have to talk at, that's in a transatlantic accent. Well, I think that's a great idea, Jacob. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. So are we doing a uh, Rochambeau? Uh, maybe we should do... Here, we'll do three. We'll do a Rochambeau. We'll do uh, a John Ken Pone, and we'll do a Rock, Paper, Scissors. And then yeah, best, for the, best two of three. For the Rock, Paper, Scissors, are we going to do the Rock, Paper, Scissors one, two, three? Okay, but for the other ones, we we want to do... Like, John Ken Pone, I know, is one, two, and then yeah. you shoot. So Well, that's how... You said Rochambeau. Is and that's how Rochambeau. So we'll do those normal, and then we'll do rock, paper, scissors, one, two, three, and then on three you go. Okay, and the best out of three is the winner. Yes, okay, so first I think we should go with uh, the classic, the Rochambeau. I think the classic would be Jean Campone since that was first, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. We can't let the Californians have everything. All right, well okay, then. First Jean Campone. So okay. on Jean, on, on Pone. Yeah. Al Capone. John Campone. Right. Okay, so I won. you won one. Okay, I'm getting a little bit scared. I'm getting a little bit scared. Okay. Don't want to have to do this for an entire episode. Uh, <laughs> and then now Rochambeau. So okay. same thing. Rochambeau. Rochambeau. Oh, God. I, I already won. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see if it's a clean sweep. Because I got scissors and Ryan did paper. <laughs> I'm... I need to look up those articles on how to win <laughs> at rock paper. Yeah, the psychology fucking, and how to win. Every yeah, episode. whatever. Waste your fucking time. Here we go. Let's do rock paper it looks scissors. Like I'm gonna have to be talking like this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, rock. Okay, wait. Rock, rock paper, paper scissors. One two three. Okay, tie. And then rock, rock paper scissors. One two three. Oh, I won again. Oh, dang, I can't do it. I went back to scissors. Like the, we he tied on scissors. The and then uh, I did scissors again, and he switched to paper. He planned so. this, this entire time, bringing up this transatlantic accent clearly, thing at the end, the, <laughs> just so he could make me talk like that for an entire. Clearly, episode. the superior psychological mind here behind people also search for. <laughs> I'm gonna be practicing this all week. <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna be doing it against yourself. And you're like, ah, I didn't think of that one. Shit, you're gonna somehow lose and rock paper scissors to yourself. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I'm just going to read everything that I have to read during the week in a transatlantic accent so that I'm ready by the next week's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm going to read it, like a recipe like you put in the <laughs> the half a cup of butter and then you get it out your brown sugar and you mix it in the bowl. Yeah, so everyone can uh, stay tuned until next week when they can hear Ryan doing that a lot. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, be real. That's, that's going to be really, really great. So well, uh, you can you can talk in a voice too if you want, but I'll, no, I'll, I'll, that's all okay. right. Yeah, I guess I'll you just leave that all like, to you. You just act like a normal guy. Fine. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for everyone for <laughs> sticking with us and learning learn about Rochambeau. See you next time on People Also Search. People Also Search. Oh yeah.